Sometimes we take apps for granted. Chrome for Android, for example, we use all the time, but do you know that there's some hidden tips and tricks underneath the hood? I'm gonna point them out to you next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy with one click. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash HOA. Hello, welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell, and sometimes I like to take a closer look at apps that I take for granted. One of the apps that I use almost every single day on my mobile device, and I'm sure it's the same with you, would be a browser. And specifically for me, it's the Chrome web browser by Google. Chrome has been around for long enough that there's a whole lot of little tips, tricks, secrets hiding underneath, as well as some that are hiding in plain sight. Maybe you just haven't given them a chance. I'm gonna dive into some of those features right now. So let's take a look at Chrome for Android. So first off, I'm gonna focus on a few things in the Chrome browser that are easier to find, and then, in a few minutes, we're gonna get into something called flags, which maybe you've heard of, maybe you haven't, but they hide some really uh, interesting kind of deeper layer, uh, ex more experimental features in some cases. But first, let's start with the easy stuff. Did you know that when you have multiple tabs open, so let's go ahead and jump into a tab. Let's jump into this article. If I wanna switch between tabs, I'm pretty used to going up to uh, the little tab selection and jumping over. But did you know that you can swipe in the address, uh, in the web address bar? And that swipes you back and forth. Uh, a little bit easier to jump in and out and in between. Uh, something definitely to know about. Kind of reminds me of switching apps in the gesture navigation. But nope, it's up there in the address browser, the web address browser. You just swipe over and you're good. All right, the next feature that I'm going to show off is maybe something that you've discovered by accident. I know the first time it happened to me, it was not something that I intended to do, but then I was like, oh, wait a minute. I had no idea. Uh, if you wanted to search something, you're reading an article, let's say, and you wanted to search something specific from the article, you might be inclined to open up a Google search, type in the name or the word or the phrase or whatever, and continue on there. You don't have to do that. In Google Chrome, pandemic as one example, if I tap and hold, it highlights it. And you can see down here, is a little card with the Google symbol next to it. Tap that and you get kind of an embedded Google search around that word. This, of course, could be a phrase. It could be um, a number of things. In this case, I've only searched the word pandemic and I get an embedded Google search into that. I could then tap this. Boom. It opens up a new tab with that search uh, and, and the target that I've tapped on, in this case, Wikipedia. So that's one way to uh, go from an article and take a word and jump out into a Google search without having to leave the app altogether. All right, this next feature is really handy if you're looking to save data. Obviously, if you're using the Chrome browser and you're out on mobile, uh, mobile internet, you know, depending on the site that you go to, you could be churning through a lot of data. Well, there is a light mode that exists within the Chrome browser for Android that's meant to cut down on the data, and it also happens to increase page load speeds. Uh, so we can find this by going into our traditional settings and look down, you can find light mode. Now you can see 12% data savings. I always have this running. I will tap in there. And you can see I've saved 171 megs uh, on 1.3 gigs of data used. I've got it activated on. Now what's happening here is that light mode, li light mode actually leans on Google servers um, to eliminate things that are slowing sites down. It also uh, in the process serves up the good stuff faster, the stuff that you're looking for because it's utilizing the Google servers. Uh, so it's a really handy thing to keep active. Um, in many cases, you don't even know when you're using it. You can see down here kind of a running list of the sites and how much savings are happening, getting a lot of savings out of, out of track.tv. But every, you know, many of the sites that I frequent, I'm getting some savings. And in the, in the real world, that can add up and save you on the data that you're using. It's, so consider this a great tool 
uh, for everyday use, but also really good if you're traveling or if you happen to be in uh, a situation where you're using roaming data. Now, another one that I tend to like and have liked for quite a while, this might be well known, but I use it all the time, uh, is shortcuts on the home screen. Now, why is this useful? Well, some of my favorite apps aren't necessarily accompanied with actual apps. They're just shortcuts to websites. If I go out to my home screen, I've got this little folder of some uh, shortcuts to apps that I like to use. APK Mirror is one example. APK Mirror, of course, is the site that's run by the Android police folks. It does have APKs for Android, and it's really useful. If you if, if an app gets an update, but you aren't seeing that update in the Play Store, you can come here and download that APK directly often, and it's a safe place to do that and it you know you can install it on your phone and get that update immediately well apk mirror doesn't have an app that actually allows you to browse through in this case they do have an app but it's for something completely different so what i've done is i actually go to uh apk mirror in chrome which is actually where we're at right now right that shortcut actually takes us there and you can see apkmirror.com if i wanted to set this as a shortcut on my home screen, just settings and add to home screen. Uh, I can add it. It, it includes the, uh, the fave icon from the site. So what I end up getting is something that looks pretty indistinguishable from an app and launches it directly in Chrome. So it's basically the same thing. Uh, and I consider that a big win. So check that out. Add to home screen. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by ExpressVPN. When you're at home, your online activity can still be traced, even in incognito mode. That's why when I'm home, I never go online without ExpressVPN. ISPs can't see what sites you visit and your data is 100% encrypted. So protect your online activity today with a VPN that I trust to secure my privacy. Visit our special link at expressvpn.com slash HOA and you can get an extra three months free on a one-year your package expressvpn.com slash HOA and you can learn more that's expressvpn.com slash HOA all right so that's some of the easier tips and tricks that I use within Chrome on a regular basis but right now we're going to dive into something a little deeper and it's a section of Chrome that you can find on desktop but you can also find on Android Chrome uh, called flags and this is a whole setting section that's hidden away. You have to know how to get to it in order to find it. And it has some really compelling features in there. The first one that we're going to focus on is called Chrome Duet. So this is how you get to flag. So let's go up to the URL bar and we're going to go ahead and type Chrome colon slash slash and then flags. So that's Chrome colon slash slash flags. When we hit enter on that, it takes us to this all, this totally hidden uh, settings pane. You can see right up at the top, experimental features ahead. Um, and so you want to keep that in mind. Some of this stuff, you might activate it and you might not know what you've done. So uh, thankfully, there, there's so many uh, items that you can find in here, but thankfully it has a very robust search. So I'm going to go ahead and do a search for duet. And you can see right there, up at the top, Chrome Duet. Now I can tap this little pull down right here. It's set to default right now. What is Chrome Duet? Well, essentially, if uh, if we take a look at the way the Chrome browser is laid out right now, everything that we have is up at the very top. Well, phones are getting larger nowadays, right? So we're using with one hand. It's hard to reach up to the very top with that single hand. Chrome Duet actually moves some of the UI uh, functionality down to the bottom. So you've got a few different options here. The ones that I would say focus on are these three right in the middle, but home search tab switcher, there's home search share variation, there's a new tab search share variation. If we select one of these, then we've changed the default there. We do have to relaunch Chrome when we make a change in flags. And once we do that, you will hopefully notice well, sometimes it doesn't work. It is an experimental thing. So let's go back to Duet. And let's change this to a different one. And relaunch. And there we go. Now we're seeing what we wanted to see. We've got the Home button down at the bottom, the Search button, and a little Share button. I can go ahead and select a different one of those and relaunch. And you'll see down here that we actually... 
uh, have a tab selector down there. And then there's another way to do it so that you can add a tab, that sort of stuff. There's all different, um, a, a few different options anyways, if you want to move some of that interactivity down to the bottom of the phone. That's called Chrome Duet. If you ever want to uh, disable it, you just find it and go to default and you'll see that it disappears on the next launch of Chrome. Well, it should have. Let's see here. Duet. Let's go to disabled. That might be the best way to do it. And boom, it's gone. It's everything is moved back up to the top. So the next feature that we're going to point out here in the flags section is previewing a link. Typically when you're on a web page, so let's go and find a web page. Uh, we'll go back to this article. Typically when you're on a web page and you want to click a link, and you click a link, it takes you through to a completely different tab. Let's say, for example, I want to tap on this. It's going to open up either a new tab or it's going to load it over the top of what I'm already looking at. Either way, I might not want to make that kind of permanent decision that I want to do this right now. So that's what preview is all about. So let's go back into the flags section. And we're going to do a search for ephemeral preview. You can probably just put in ephemeral and it starts to come up. An ephemeral, an ephemeral preview tab using the bottom sheet. All right, so right now it's set to default. If I go ahead and enable this and relaunch. Great, so now we've relaunched with that change in place, hopefully, if it works the way it's supposed to. Let's go into this Wikipedia article and allow it to load up. Okay, and then when I find a link that I want to uh, preview, I just tap and hold it, and I get this new addition into the menu that appears, preview page. When I tap that, I now get the page loading in this little overlay window from the bottom. And this is like a no commitment window, right? When I'm done, I can swipe it away. I can choose to pop it out into its own tab if I prefer, or I can just get rid of it when I'm done and it didn't clog up my total tabs open. So that's a preview tab uh, menu option that you can find in flags that is really handy. All right, the next feature that we're going to show off in the flags section, we're going to go back into flags here, is going to improve your download speed. So think about this. When you're downloading files from a site, you're downloading it often from a single domain. Um, and you could be downloading this from multiple domains uh, by the same host. Sometimes that's possible. And you can set up Chrome uh, to facilitate that. So if we go into flags and we do a search for parallel downloading... Oh, parallel downloading. There it is. Okay, parallel downloading. That's exactly what this does. It essentially looks uh, to speed up your downloads by downloading from multiple domains by the same host. Many downloads over two seconds long are going to get the speed boost. I'm going to go ahead and reboot this. And this is one of those things that you just kind of keep running in the background. All it's going to do is improve your experience. It's really not going to hurt it. So you might as well leave it on and speed things up. And finally, one more thing to point out here in flags, that's actually a pretty cool UI uh, choice, if you will. So right now with the tab selection, we get this vertical uh, selection that we can swipe up and down. I actually really do like this uh, selector, but uh, previous versions of Chrome and different iterations have shown other options, be it horizontal selections or little uh, thumbnails and like a grid view. That's what we're going to go into right now. So if you go into Chrome colon slash slash flags and do a search for tab grid layout, there you go, tab grid layout. Then you're going to see a little pull down with a bunch of options here. You've got different variations, different tiles, different uh, aspect ratios for the thumbnails, that sort of stuff. So if I go in and do the two to one aspect ratio and relaunch, we're going to see the change immediately from the vertical tower that we saw before like that. And as you can see, sometimes it doesn't take immediately. So tab grid layout. Let's just do one to two, relaunch, and there we go. So you can see this is like 
uh, you know, almost the entire screen that you can see in these thumbnails. It kind of gives, you know, shrinks them down to make them uh, visible a little bit easier to see. Tab, grid, layout. Maybe we want to go for a three, four, three to four aspect ratio. And boom, it shrinks it up. You've got a number of different view options to play with in tab grid layout. Uh, so take a look there, find the one that you actually really like. Uh, you know, they don't, they don't keep this visible in your normal settings. You really have to kind of do some work in order to find it, but you can always jump back to the default. And if this video has shown you one thing, it's that sometimes it takes a while to get there. So disabled relaunch and now we're back to the way we started. So there you go. A few tips and tricks on Chrome. Maybe you didn't know about the flags section in Chrome. You can really uh, get in there and tweak a lot of things that are either useful or things that you might not have any idea what you're doing. So be very careful. Thankfully, there is a way to revert to uh, the defaults on all those settings. So if you really throw things out of whack, you can always go into your flag section and kind of revert to, to default and you'll be back to normal. So take a look. There's a whole lot more than meets the eye when it comes to Chrome for Android. Uh, send me your questions or your own tips and tricks. I'd love to hear them. Hands on Android at twit.tv. You can also visit our show page on the web. That's twit.tv slash HOA. That's the important place you want to remember. Go there. You can subscribe to our audio feed, our video feed, and any podcatcher that you like. You can also find a link out to YouTube where you can find our video there. I'm Jason Howell. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Hands on Android. Hey folks, I am Micah Sargent, co-host of Tech News Weekly right here on the Twit Network. Yes, Tech News Weekly is a show we do every week, Jason Howell and myself, where we talk to people who are making and a break in the tech news. That's right, it's journalists, it's inventors, it's app makers, it's everybody who's bringing the tech news in a given week. It's all the stuff you want to know about in bite-sized chunks in a fantastic package. So be sure to subscribe. It's twit.tv slash TNW. Thank you.